Hi, Dr. Johnson here. The next subject I want to cover is the next water test to run before you even get rolling in the treatment of a fish disease. We've covered um, lots of different things, water quality parameters in particular. Um, we've done ammonia and nitrite and nitrate. And now we're going to talk about the most important water test that you run in a fish system, whether it's new or not, is a test for pH. It's a test of whether or not the water is acid or alkaline. Saltwater fish like it alkaline. Freshwater fish like it neutral. And certain kinds of fish like it acid. Uh, and let me explain that. pH occurs through a spectrum of living fish. They, it occurs through a, a range of about 5.5 to 6 for fish that come from the Amazon River. Soft water, brown water, neon tetras, discus, ram cichlids. Anything from South America in general would like a, a pH that's on the low or acid side. So you look for a 5 or a 6 on that. Um, then neutral is pretty much most of the fish that you might buy at a pet store, especially pet stores that are like big chain pet stores that hardly can keep fish alive at all. They're looking at the real hardy fish. Those kind of need a neutral pH, you know, one size fits all. Anything that you buy out of a... Um, store, uh, regular chain store. And then there's alkaline water fish too. Those would be saltwater fish. Also, African cichlids prefer a high alkalinity uh, pH reading of something like 7 or 8, 8 and a half is good. But in general, the fish we're talking about is about 7. Okay, pH. In a nutshell, you want it to be around 7. You want to test it with a dip type test kit. They're accurate enough to give you an idea whether you're in the vicinity of neutral or if you're crazy high, which is bad, or if you're crazy low, which is bad. And modifying pH is not that hard. Uh, with beginners especially, I recommend that they just get a uh, neutral regulator. There's actually one called that, neutral regulator. And it takes your pH to 7 to 7.4. Just automatically does that. Now, some people complain. They go, oh, there's phosphates in it. And that'll grow algae. For the beginner, you know, that's kind of okay because growing algae controls nitrates, which we covered in the last video. So, again, for beginners, the neutral regulator with phosphates, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, do that. You've got a good pH, low nitrates, yeah, some algae, but get over it. Um, so you can buffer the pH to neutral, and that's a good thing. Constantly replacing water can also stabilize the pH depending on what your tap water is and don't underestimate the value of testing your tap water pH especially if you're dealing with something that's very high or very low because your source water could be causing that. Um, pH crash bears discussion because that's kind of what kills a lot of fish overnight. Um, the uh, pH is supported by baking soda in a very oversimplified version. Actually, you don't have to use baking soda to keep your pH up. You can use limestone, dolomitic or otherwise. You can use um, um, regulators. You can use baking soda. You can use um, calcwasser and a bunch of other fancy stuff to keep the pH up. But the long and the short of it is everything that occurs in a natural environment has a tendency to want to bring the pH down. Because everything that happens in the natural environment is either metabolizing protein and usually nitrogenous wastes, fish pee, has an acid pH naturally. Uh, and anything that's using oxygen or nitrogen is producing carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide's basic behavior in water is to produce what is called carbonic acid. It just does that. And in the process of doing that, it has a tendency to drag the pH down. And it would drag the pH down flat to zero, well, to a terminal level, if there weren't things in the water to keep the pH up. Well, my point of saying that is this, is that sometimes there aren't things to support the pH, and the fish are breathing, and things are decaying, and the water is becoming full of carbon dioxide and carbonic acid, and the pH crashes. And when the pH drops from 7 to 5.5, over the course of a couple hours, then all your fish will die. So sometimes you wake up in the morning 
and the fish are all dead, or they're dying really hard, they're getting all slimy and going to the bottom with clamped fins, isolating, trouble breathing. And it's not a parasite, it's not koi herpes virus, it's just a very low pH from pH crash. So test it. And if the pH checks very, very low, console yourself that you can bring the pH back up pretty fast. This is an important piece of information. I sure hope you had your pen and paper handy. For pH to drop two points in a half a day will kill them. To come up a point and a half to two points in an hour during a pH crash, totally worth it. It's kind of like, in a pH crash, it's sort of like a fire with a room full of smoke, and the fish are at 5.5, and they're hating it and trying to die. And the fireman comes in the room where the fire is, and he says, I'm going to put this fire out slowly because I don't want to shock your system. No. You want to get out of that fire and out of that smoke as fast as you possibly can. And it's the same thing in a pH crash. If the fish are at 5.5 and you can see them dying or dead, you want to bring that pH up about as fast as you can. And the fastest way to bring it up is aeration and application of baking soda. And I'm going to cover that in a different video or on my website, coivet.com, because basically what we're talking about is pH at this point, testing for it as the precursor to any management of a fish disease outbreak and recognizing what some of the common pH problems are. And that is, to recap, a failure to support the pH with a neutral regulator or buffer or limestone or any of those other things, baking soda, allowing the pH to crash out and then having the fish dying very, very hard from pH crash and what that looks like. And because it looks like everything else, ick, chelidinella, trichodina, ammonia burn, you just have to test for it, and I can't emphasize that enough. So this step, check the pH and make sure that it's in the vicinity of neutral. Should I say anything else about pH? Probably, and I've probably forgotten some things. Let me add one. Ammonia is more toxic at a high pH. Yeah. So if you've got a very, very low pH and you've got ammonia present, the ammonia isn't hurting the fish as much as the very low pH. When you bring the pH back up from a pH crash and there's ammonia present, here's the cool thing. Lots of times when you bring the uh, pH back up, the ammonia goes down because now the beneficial bacteria are happy again. I hope you wrote that down. Anyway, so check the pH. That's the important part of this step. Thanks.